Well, winter's upon us again, and along with it comes colder weather. And it seems also a lot of YouTubers dropping videos on how to give you ideas on how you can warm your car camping setup through the winter period. And I've got to be honest, over the past 18 months of car camping in this setup, it's been a bit of an issue and a thing that I've been thinking about quite a lot. Last winter, I did nothing, and I was vowing I was going to do something this winter. But here's the thing if you're a regular to the channel you know i'm a realist i'm not going to feed you a load of crap here i'm going to tell you the way it is and let's be honest if you're unlucky enough to be living in your car through this winter period then i can only assume that you haven't got a lot of cheese or cash to be spending and also my heart goes out to you unbeknown to the channel i did spend 10 days last year actually living in this car before i'd got this set up so i can't empathize with you but also with the cheese if you're car camping yeah we all want a massive van or a motorhome but we haven't got the cash for it have we we're making the best of what we've got which is generally a car sat in front of our house that we do up at the weekend and go camping in so all that bearing in mind how are you going to heat it and also bear in mind that this is a very small space so it shouldn't take too much this is not going to be an hour long video but i think it's fair that we go through all the other options and then batter ourselves down to why i've chose what's inside this box starting with the diesel eater yep now you can get self-contained diesel eater units with the pump and tank unit all together in a nice sealed unit that will fit possibly in your footwell or behind your passenger seat. The only problem with a diesel eater is, although there are many, one, installation. You're gonna to have to cut two holes in somewhere in your car to feed out the exhaust pipe and also to feed out an air intake pipe. They are relatively cheap these days. You could probably pick one up for about 110 pounds from numerous places, but they are relatively noisy. The actual pump that's inside them just clicks constantly. And on top of that, I think the main problem with a diesel eater is the power. They build them to plug into your car battery, but let me tell you, for the first half an hour of running, they'll run on about 160 watts, and thereafter, through the night, if you run it all night, they're sucking 50 to 40 to 50 watts off your car battery. Good luck not having a flat battery in the morning. And the only other option to really power it is to have a leisure battery set up with relays or have a massive portable power unit. So I do think a diesel eater for a normal person, it just isn't feasible. But talking about power units leads me on to the second level down for heating your car camping setup, the portable electric heater or the desktop heater. Yep, they are good and they are going to warm the car up and it's easy to use, it's safe to use, but the one problem is with it, how are you going to power it? Those things are either like 600 watts, 400 watts, 200 watts, whatever it is, they're not a 12 volt that's running off your car's cigarette battery. You run it off your car battery for about two hours before it was flat. So how are you powering it? You've basically got two options. You can forget solar because it's expensive and it's also Europe and the UK through the winter, so it's not a viable option. The next one is, one of the two, is a leisure battery set up with a relay system. Let's say you were going to go for about a 1600 watt one, you're probably looking at about four or 500 quid. That's if you can find the space in your car to install it into. The other option is to go for a power station unit. So let's say you went for a 1,000 watt power station unit, you're probably looking at about £1,000. Now here's the thing, if you have a portable desktop heater that's 500 watts, that portable power station is going to power it for two hours. Your leisure battery system for three hours until they're completely flat. So basically, they're useless. And on top of that, this video is about doing it on the cheap for living or camping in your car. Let's be realistic, this whole car costs £1,200. So for those reasons, I just don't think the uh, desktop power heaters are a viable option. I know there is one other electric option for heating a car. You've got those 40 and 80 watt kind of strip lights, but I've got to be honest, I have watched a few other channels and YouTubers that have installed those tube lights, and the two people that I've seen that have installed them have also mentioned that they're going to be uninstalling them now because they just didn't give off enough heat to warm them through the night. So just based on that sort of research and other people's opinions and comments that I've seen on my videos about them, I don't think they're a viable option. I just don't think they give off enough heat. And you also need electrical power to heat them. So I don't think you're going to be able to plug it into your car battery overnight. 
So for me, that's another one that I wouldn't choose. Which leads us onto the next thing that I won't be choosing. The portable gas heater, and I'll just say, I tried one of these in the car last year, and I was so afraid of the thing while it was on that I had to get out of the car. You know the things I mean. They were originally designed years ago to heat a tent in a camping setup. They take a can of gas and then various different varieties of it. They have this amazingly powerful flame that comes out and it's just not safe. Originally, you used to have them for camping and you'd put it outside the tent, open the tent door and blow a bit of air in. No one in their right mind was gonna have one of them sat in the tent. Honestly, a millisecond that falls over, the whole tent's gone up in flames and you're just sitting there with a metal frame. You're not gonna be putting in that, that in your car and if you do you've got to be so careful imagine having it on overnight you may as well flip a coin to see if you're going to wake up in a ball of flames or not so for me the gas portable eaters are not an option which leads us to what's in the box yeah that's it a cooker a kettle and what represents an electric blanket now hear me out the reason is those gas heaters that we talked about, they use a lot of gas. You might be using one can a night. You may as well be using it to do something. And that is make a cup of tea, which also on top of it is going to warm you up. You turn that on and within 60 seconds of that steaming, the whole of this car is going to be absolutely baking. Crack your window for a second, get the steam out, close it back up and you've got heat in the car for about the next hour. On top of that, I'm not going to lie, it's all about layers. Thermal leggings, another pair of socks, maybe a nice little body warmer fleece thing, jumpers, beanies, more or less, keep yourself warm. But there is one thing I found which is gonna be pretty much affordable to everyone and might be worth doing. An electric 12 volt blanket. You can pick these up on Amazon or wherever else for less than 20 quid. And the beauty of them is they do plug into your cigarette lighter and you can run them off your car battery all night because these all run at less than 10 watts per hour. So you can either wrap yourself up it in it in the night when you're just chilling or when you get in bed at night, you can lay it on top of you. And I've got to be honest, that really is where it's at. A kettle, a cup of tea, layers, an electric blanket. And you've got to think about it as well, finally, is how many hours are you going to be wanting to heat this up? You're looking at four or five hours. It's the winter. You're probably out in the day doing something. The nights are dark quick, so you're probably going to be in bed by 10, 11 o'clock. So you're only looking at four or five hours. Don't go to all the hassle of installations, expensive power units, or burning yourself to smithereens. Think about it logically. Quick cup of tea, warm the crib up in two minutes, wrap yourself up in an electric blanket, and put your beanie and jumper on. As for now, I hope it's been helpful. I really do, I don't normally do these type of videos, so there it is, as always. Take it easy, enjoy the camp, and stay self-aware, and hope to see you in the next.